Um, Y'all be seeing a presentation. It's very similar to some others that I've done. So if you've been at any other meetings we've had recently, some of this may look a little familiar, but we've tailored a little bit of the info for commercial. So if you want to switch over, I'll get started. Yeah, past that. <laughs> All right, so let's kind of talk about what's going on. So it's it's not a new issue, but it's been growing, right? So we've got all these wonderful meters that we've got in our system, but we've started seeing an extreme increase in the number of zeros that are kicking out in our system. Basically, um, we have sites where when we look at this, we look at your history, we look at the other meters at your site, and your water meter is reading zero, but your electrics you know, running fine. Your gas is reading zero in the winter, or if you're industrial or large commercial and use a year round with us, but we're seeing zero usage on that gas meter when everything else is churning along and running, right? So from that, we've kind of discovered that we've got some fa failure with some of our meters. And it's not with the entire meter, it's with some parts, right? And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about kind of what those parts are and what's happening and what we're doing. And then I'm gonna try to, um, I got some questions in advance. I'll try to answer a few of those and move as quickly as possible so I can get to any additional questions that you have, right? So for us with the water meters, we have um, a register on the front of those water meters that's similar to like odometer in your car where we have an issue with those. And then for our gas meters, a very similar piece where basically you have um, this little plastic part that's causing us a whole lot of trouble. So um, the issue with both, that when this register in the water meter fails, when this plastic part breaks in the index for the gas meter, basically the car is driving, but the odometer isn't turning, right? And so there's no way to go get that data from that meter because it's, it's running, but um, the odometer on the front of the meter basically is not turning. So I'll have some pictures kind of show what that looks like. Next slide. So for our gas meters, our um, wonderful culprit is this item called a wriggler. And I would have brought one, but I forgot to bring one from um, downstairs. Um, so this is a plastic part basically that connects with your gas meter as that diaphragm moves and, and the gas flows through there, it basically connects your index on your meter to the meter. And so as that gas flows, it turns, right? Um, so what's happening is that wriggler will turn and it'll break. And once it breaks, your gas still flows, the wriggler doesn't turn, so the odometer on the front of your meter doesn't turn. Um, if you have a smart meter, there's a magnet that's associated with that that helps count the turns and revolutions. That magnet doesn't turn either. So even if you got a smart meter, it's that magnet's not turning, the odometer's not turning, so your meat, gas is flowing, but we're not seeing any usage on your meter. And so that's kind of what's causing the issues with our gas meters. Uh, next slide. For our water meters, uh, what we have is we have this register on the front that basically is, is mounted on the front of your water meter and is used to show visually your usage and also used when we plug our communication device into it is used um, to communicate your usage back to us remotely. So smart, non-smart, you still have the same meter. It's just a plug-in, right, for communication. What's happening is those digital registers, um, it's likely some type of water intrusion and water and electronics, um, right? So basically it's, it's a given what's gonna happen, right? So what happens is that digital register will start to blank out and it'll like throw a false number, numbers will start missing part of your digits and then it'll just go out. So it may throw a crazy number and shut down on you, right? Um, we have a simple solution for that, but a time consuming solution. So basically um, our system, you still can plug in, it can communicate with our analog register. So kind of the old style odometers, it's not, it doesn't have as many electrical parts and we're seeing great success with replacing those with um, the analog registers for water. Now, all of that, what it says though, is still you've got billing problems because of that, right? So we had this big influx of these zeros. Um, if we go in and say, yeah, this zero isn't accurate, we estimate it, guess what happens next month? Your zero comes back now as a negative because your zero came back again and we estimated it last month. So I'm going to get you back again. And as the next one breaks, I've got to deal with their issue and I'm going to get them back every single month, right? So basically you had this huge mountain that was growing that we had to deal with of all these billing meters kicking out saying something's not right. And once you kicked out, you kicked out every month as opposed to us stopping that from happening. So it's just a growing mountain. And that's kind of how we ended up where we are. So we go to the next slide. So I want to talk about some of the things that we're, we've been doing to take care of that, right? So um, 
at the peak in August, we had over 96,000 bills that were delayed. That's a lot. Um, so for us, we had to, to make some decisions and it's not necessarily just an easy one. So we kind of went at this a different direction. So um, we've added additional resources. Um, some of the folks in here, um, specifically Jennifer, hey, Jennifer in the back, um, are doing some double duty with us. We have multiple people who've ever worked in billing that we have conscripted is the word I think we love to use around here that are um, now part of our billing team until we let them go. Um, in addition to the staff that we have and additional people that we've hired and trained to assist with getting the bills out of the door. Um, Timothy mentioned um, University of Memphis Research Foundation also is helping us. So students are actually helping us with getting our bills corrected, right? Um, we had to make some system changes to help get some of these things done. Because remember, it's gonna keep coming back every month because every month we still got an issue. So we've got to get the system to know we've got an issue with this meter. Stop sending this one to us till we can fix it, right? kind of basically how that works. So dealing with some of those things and getting some of those bills out of the door. So you can see since um, that started in August when we started getting all these bills pushed out, um, whether it was through system changes, through adding additional people, process changes, that we're getting close. So we went from about 96,000 and um, this is Monday's numbers. As of this morning, we were at 8,500 delayed bills. So. Um, things are getting better. So we've, we've gotten that mountain down about 91% from where we used to be. Um, of that, this is the residential and commercial numbers, right? So we've got about um, 2,800 commercial accounts that are still affected and have delayed bills with them. That's not bills, that's, that's, you know, that's accounts. So you may be missing multiple bills for that one account. Um, for us, we've got a lot of people helping to make this better, right? So in addition to the staff that we have in the offices helping to get the bills out of the door, we've also hired um, a firm. So Utility Partners of America, they're basically our field version to help with this process. So they're assisting our meter shops. Um, right now, because it's winter, they're focusing on some gas meters that we have identified that need to be looked at, reviewed, and checked because there's possibly an issue. Um, we've given them a little over 13,000 of those that they kind of have a charge to get completed um, by middle of December of getting them reviewed, checked and corrected. Um, they've done about 8,300 of those meters. And so what you see here on this chart, um, the pie chart, the green is what they've completed. And this was as of the week before Thanksgiving. So this number has changed since then. And the blue is kind of what they had remaining during that time. And then we also have like um, a map that shows the same information of kind of how they're working. So we had them working in the areas we saw the most issues and working out. So that um, they're basically working by billing cycle in condensed areas. So they're not running all over town, right? You work in this area, you get everything fixed in that area, move to the next one. So the map kind of just shows you how they're growing and getting those corrections. So all the green in that map is what's been um, fixed for them of those 13,000 that we've identified up front. In addition to that, they are also, we have, they're going to be working and over the next 12 months, they're going to go to every gas meter that we have and do a review and analysis, not just these first group that we identified. So um, they're really digging in for us. We also have um, a group of water meters that we identified up front. They'll be working for us. There's about 12,000 of those. So our meter shop and water has already changed and updated about 20,000 meters over the last few years, but this group is gonna go in and do about another 12,000 for us. And then we'll be slowly kind of sweeping through correcting those registers on those water meters for people. So we've got plans to get situations corrected, um, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. So we do definitely appreciate your patience. Next slide. All right, so I got some questions in advance and I was so happy that y'all did that. Um, and I'm gonna try to not rush them too fast. We've got about 15 minutes or so left. And um, apparently that's all me. So I'm gonna make sure we got some time for the additional questions that didn't get sent in early. So some of these, I may not go into deep, deep detail for you, but I'm gonna try to, to take care of them for you, right? So basically when will the delay in the meter reads get back on track? Um, we're gonna go with soon. Yep. Um, so we committed to have everything residential completed mm -hmm. within the next couple weeks. Um, some of the commercial, as some of you know, the bigger your meter is, the more complex your billing is, the um, fewer people I have that I'm going to let touch it. 
So it takes a little bit longer for some of those things, right? Um, because it is not the same as working with the small residential leader. So some of that is taking us a little bit longer, but we're trying within the first month or two of January to have everything cleared out and fixed and go back to normal because we're always going to have some delayed bills, but go back to parameters that are industry acceptable is where we're working to be by, before the end of the first quarter of next year. All right, so why does it take so long to get a count of exceptions? Well, it depends on the situation. One, we had so many that we couldn't get to them all, right? Because everyone has to be, anything that kicks out is analyzed by a person. And if you're getting seven or 8,000 a day that the system says, I can't build this, something's not quite right. And you're used to getting three or 400 a day. It's very difficult to get them all done at once. So that's going to cause some delay in getting those exceptions cleared in a faster rate. So that's kind of why it takes so long. These are anomalies. The system says, I can't build this. Something's not right. A person needs to analyze this account to determine if this is accurate, if something needs to be checked in the field. So it's not just a automation thing, right, for some of these. Now, there are some opportunities for us to do some additional automation um, for some of these exceptions, especially um, things like vacant properties things like that, we can put some parameters in place and we're working towards doing some of that to take care of some of those. So um, please explain how the KW usage is determined and reflected on the bill. Explain demand and how it is calculated. Okay, so KW usage for us, that is kind of like, um, more like your capacity or in, you know that momentary usage that you require from us. So for MLGW, we do an average of 30 minutes and whatever is your highest KW in that 30 minute average over your billing period is the number that goes on your bill as your actual KW number. Now, most people at their homes, you don't have KW at your home, right? You just have kilowatt hours on your bill. This is how much energy I use. And so why do I have a fee for KW and other people don't, right? So it's a capacity thing. So let's look at this from the perspective of, I'm gonna use light bulbs, light bulbs are not a good example. So, but to pretend my light bulbs are maybe um, motors, okay? So if I got one light bulb that's hundred watts and I run that one light bulb for 10 hours, I've used one kilowatt hour, use a thousand watts over an hour. That's how much I've consumed in use. So I run this one light bulb, 10 hours. If I run 10 light bulbs for one hour, I use the same amount of energy as that other person. And if I'm not charging the man, I'm charging you both the exact same. Now light bulbs, that doesn't seem like a big deal, right? But now instead of light bulbs, top motors, right? So if you're running one motor and you're running 10 motors, what you have to have on your side to handle that, what we have to reserve capacity in our system for you to run all 10 of those motors at the exact same time is significantly different for that person that runs one motor for 10 hours, as opposed to that person has 10 motors on for one hour. So the capacity that I have to reserve on my power lines for you is significantly different than that other customer. The equipment that I have to have in my system and at your site is significantly different that I would have to have for that other customer to be able to even serve you power at that big of a load instantaneously when you ask for it, right? So the draw on our system that caused by the pool that customers have, right? Smaller customer, smaller usage is gonna have a smaller pool. Larger customer, larger equipment, you're gonna ask for something instantaneous and you're gonna be asking for a whole lot more than somebody else. And so we have got to have some kind of a charge for what that capacity is and that additional equipment and the draw on that system that's for just that customer that is requiring that higher KW usage. So that's the reason why there's a charge for that and why you'll see that at homes, you don't see that, but at businesses based on how big your usage is, you will. That's why if anybody's in the manufacturing world, one of your favorite things is soft starts for starting up your site, right? Because you go in a manufacturing plant and you turn the whole plant on and you just set your demand cost for the whole month in 30 minutes for the whole, you know, as opposed to if you've done a soft start for that morning, that may not be when your peak is. It actually be based on your true manufacturing peak, not just because you just flip the switch for everything you got. So that's the reason for that demand. All right, so I'm not really sure I quite understand, but the difference between the dates of actual meter readings versus the actual billing cycles. So for us in 
we have 21 billing cycles every month, right? So in general, there's about 21 business days in a month. So for us, our revenue month is going to be 21 cycles during that month, okay? And so what we do is we've broken everything up. So the chart you saw earlier where it shows where um, UPA is working on those gas meters basically is by billing cycle. So every small region is one of those 21 areas. Every month, we um, at the end of every year, so I think the chart for 2024 should be out. If it's not out, it'll be out momentarily says based on if you're cycle one through 21, what date we're going to get your reading through the meter reading system or send a meter reader by to get your reading. So that is your meter reading date and it's based on those billing cycles. In a perfect world, no exceptions, no issues, no concerns, the next business day is the day that we actually charge, make charges based on those readings and send you a bill. So um, we have 21 billing cycles and those meter reads are all spread out as evenly as possible amongst those 21 cycles. So that's kind of the difference between what those two things are for us. They kind of work together. Uh, why aren't all monthly invoices available on your web account to avoid late fees when invoices are not received timely or lost? That is a very good question. <laughs> so all invoices should be available on my account. There are instances when um, we have to manually type bills. Our system, we do not have a method yet to upload those into my account. So unfortunately, if that happens, um, your bill will not show up in my account. You should not have late fees though because of that. And so we should definitely have some conversations about what we can do about when you're receiving your bill, how you do it, and um, working through us providing you copies of those manually typed bills when they are actually generated. I have a wonderful account rep, Melinda Patrick Collins. <laughs> so I follow all the time. So we're, we're able to actually work through those things. <laughs> oh, you didn't pay her for that, did you? Okay, just check it. Okay, nice to meet you. All right, and so the last one, I had to make a couple notes because I couldn't just spit those all off the top of my head. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of remote meter reading? So I wanted to make sure I hit a couple of them that I thought were really important to us. So I'm gonna start with some of the disadvantages, right? Um, having them, especially when it comes to water, um, one of the, it's, it's a disadvantage that sometimes we can't get a signal. So I would love to remind any of you, if you happen to know where your water meter is, Please don't park on top of it. Please don't put trash on top of it. Um, and sometimes when we have heavy rain, that water filling up the pit will keep us from getting a signal from that meter. So if you love getting uh, going on my account and seeing your water readings every day and for a while you can't see them, it usually has something to do with some of those things. So one of the advantage, one of the disadvantages, unfortunately, when it comes to water is we may not always get a reading every single day um, because of challenges like that. Um, meters and systems tend to not be interchangeable. So once you pick one, you get what you get, unless you want to get a whole new system, right? So, cause you've got all of this technology and IT intertwined into it. So that's another one of the disadvantages that tend to come with it. And also a lot of people think, since I have these meters that have all this data that I'm going to save money. And what you have is data, not money saving. So you're not going to save money unless you do something with the data that you receive, right? So it's good to have the data, but if you don't use it, it's not, some people think, oh, if I get these meters, I'm going to save money. Not if you don't change behaviors or use the data to make different decisions, right? So those are really some of the major disadvantages. And um, the other one would be when one breaks, people are really, really, really mad about it because in their mind, you know, we've we've kind of conditioned everyone that, once I have this, I never have to see you anymore and I don't have to worry about unlocking my gate for you and I don't have to deal with you. And so then when you do have to show up because there's an issue, I'm not happy with you. So those are a lot of our disadvantages. That tends to help with your perception of us if we got to show up and you were hoping you didn't have to see us anymore. Um, but advantages, the fact that you do have more data available, right? So before, if we came around once a month and we got a reading, we have that reading and that's it. You know, so we now have the ability to provide you with interval data where you can see 30 minute data or hour data when it comes to your electric meters. Um, we have hourly data for water meters now and gas meters that we did not have before for customers. 
that's available to you if you want that kind of information. So you have way more than that one reading per month if you like that kind of information. We have our meter intelligence system. And um, if you haven't subscribed to that, I definitely encourage people to consider that. It's not real-time data, but today you can see what was going on yesterday and you can see a whole lot of history. It's very valuable if you are looking to make some savings and some changes. Um, we actually provide notifications. So if you've got a large water meter with us, if we have a uh, over the limit alarm, which basically means there was an inrush of water into your system and we're gonna send somebody out to see if you had some kind of major break at your site. We didn't have that kind of information before. If you have a smaller water meter at your site, I don't know if any of you've ever gotten this letter. We got two water leak letters. One that says, hey, your usage this month was really high. And we have another one that says, we saw 24 hour usage at your house yesterday. And so we send those out for anything that's a one inch meter or smaller. And Corey told my time is up. And so it's a, that is actually very valuable, right? That we see 24 hour usage today and we put a letter in the mail for you that night, right? That says, hey, you really should check into this. And I've yet, other than someone filling a pool, had a special process going on at, that they knew about that didn't have a leak when they got that 24 hour letter. Don't tell me they don't. But eventually they usually come back and say, you know what, you're right, we found it, right? Because we saw water usage every single hour at your site. So those are some of the things. And we can also offer incentives for customers. So our prepaid program couldn't happen without that. Um, connecting your service without physically showing up to your site wouldn't be able to happen. Reconnecting after payment would be slower, things like that. So it's got a lot of advantages too. Unfortunately, the couple things we got going on right now kind of downplays all the good that comes from them. All right, so I think that's all that I had. And so we've got a whopping two minutes left. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's the time frame what's the time frame why is it not cool when that two days and it's like the first title yes so unfortunately that is a symptom of a billing system that was not designed to have bills to be late right so the way it, it the settings of, in that system don't know how to handle that. And so if your bill gets delayed beyond a certain number of days, so it, it has delay built in, right? Um, but if it gets delayed far enough that your next bill has been generated, it doesn't know what to do when it comes to the payment for that first bill. And it says, oh, this next bill is gonna say how much was owed on that bill. So I can't draft this money because it's not looking at how much you paid, it's looking at the amount due on your bill. And so if I draft this bill that went out and the next bill that is also gone out, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna draft you twice and draft too much money. So it says, oh, don't draft this first one. We're gonna wait and we're gonna draft the second one. Problem comes in, like you said, you may get a late fee. So we have to unfortunately work manually with Nina to get that replaced until we can get some system changes made. Yes. Yeah, I just had a quick question. It's a one question, three parts. Okay. It's quick though, I I'm promise. Okay. And thank you to Nina too. She's my account rep. She's awesome. Got to give her a shout out. Okay, gas meters. And you described it very efficiently with it turns around, it breaks. Are we likely to see more of that happening as soon as, I mean, it's getting cold. They're going to be spinning like crazy. Yes. So we're probably likely to start seeing a lot more problems or that could happen. So this time of year, we do tend to see an uptick. So we, okay. we're, we're preparing for that, right? So um, while UPA is working on some meters that we have given them identified, um, we have some room in the quantity we put in that contract so that they can help me a little bit through yeah. December to, to get to some of those meters to minimize um, those challenges and get to them and actually repair some of those. The second part is residential and commercial. Are they both being affected? Or are they the same meters? They, so they have similar parts. So Some residential or commercial, no matter what size water meter you have, you all have the same type of register. It may just be a little bigger, a little smaller. Um, gas meters, all except for extremely large gas meters, 
will have the same issues, right? So um, those very large ones will be different. So they don't necessarily have the same issue going on with them. They do have a similar part, um, but you're still going to see some yeah. challenges with that, yes. And the system that they all communicate using and how they transmit, is that affected by anything out external concerning power, theater, or, or cell phones or anything like that? So right now with the system that we have, it's kind of like a, it's a, um, kind of a mesh network around the city. So um, if your power is out, I don't know if you've noticed the little things on top of some of the streetlight poles, like two little antennas. Um, if power out is in that area, then there will be a delay of us getting data back until it's restored in that area because it's basically trying to jump back to um, its home to you know send our data back to it. Yes. So once power is back on, you know we got that data. That's right. Any other questions? So, okay. So there's one question in the chat and I'm not sure if you can answer it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, we reach out to when we experience power blips. Power blips are bad for our industry are bad. The blips have damaged expensive drives on our equipment and have caused us extensive downtime. Yes. So I know there's a whole group of people that know the answer to that. I'm looking, you're standing next to one that does and another one. So for those power blips, right? The, the first thing that you want to do is you always reach out to your key account rep when it comes to your power outages, power blips, power reliability. Um, they will work with you. They work with our reliability engineering department to assist with any questions, any issues. Um, they actually work with them to track events for your site. And if they need to send people out, they will do that from walking the lines for your facility to working with you and doing an analysis of their site and all the lines that serve them to see if there's any changes or upgrades that we can do to help with their issues. So um, always start with your account rep. Thank you. I would like to say also, and Shelly and I talked about this, if you have some issues or concerns that you still have some major billing issues going on, I do want you to um, get with your account rep, make sure you get what those issues or concerns are addressed. And if we need to set up some meetings or conversations to address your specific concerns or questions, we're, we're more than willing to help and do that for you.